look at him. Fast moving engineer. There we go. Yeah. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? Back to work on Friday. <laughs> so ready? Yep, it's running. So hi guys, um, we're here at Blackstar with Ian, founder and like dude of Blackstar. And he, he, we talk about Blackstar in general and like new amps and what's coming up. So yeah. uh, maybe we would start with like, tell us what's, what's Blackstar all about. What you guys from ex Marshall members and you yeah. decide to leave, so why? Why? It's a good question. Just tell us what's about Blackstar. Yeah, so um, as you know, probably know the story, there's four of us um, who all worked in the new product department over right. there. Um, myself and Bruce were sort of technical electronic engineering right. guys. Right. and then So you was like into amp designing from Abs scratch on? Okay. Yeah, so <coughs> I suppose um, my big thing is sound. I've okay. always, I played guitar since I was kind of 11. Bruce, um, who was, who is one of the other founders, um, he'd also played bass all his okay. life and played guitar. So you're um, musicians. Yeah, so we're like, musicians, okay. both of us electronic engineers, but Bruce was like super engineer. Right. Um, I often said this before, but you know, the, the term genius is used quite often in, okay. in ele around electronics, yeah, right. but he actually is. And I'm not, but I'm very good. <laughs> I've got big ears and certainly when I was younger, they were pretty effective. All right. So we worked together very closely on lots of designs. He kind of mentored me as an engineer and I was in a band with him. I was a guitarist, so we got on really so well. So you just give him like a feedback on yeah. what's- Yeah, and the, the, way, the way a lot of the original early ideas were around, you know, all four of us would chat. A lot of it was around kind of us ch challenging each other on a technical point of view and also okay. from a user point of view. Can we make the amps do this? Can we do this? Why do they do that? Is and it possible to lot, go yeah. this way, right? Yeah. Okay. But I think um, people say, why did we do Blackstar? And uh, really for us, the, the big deal was um, that we really wanted to try some, some new stuff. And we had a lots of technical ideas and areas we wanted to explore. Okay. And the great thing, amazing thing about working at Marshall was, um, you know, it was, it was had such great heritage, a great place to learn. And you'd go to the drawing cabinets of schematics and you'd have the reference amps for rock and roll Every, forever. Yeah. All right, you know? okay. <clears throat> I suppose on the flip side, there's also a bit of an expectation about what a marshal should do. Yeah. And we were interested in doing some other stuff. So, so, so this like both sides of the story is the heritage, like it's a yeah. good and a, like a bad side, so yeah. you get stuck into it. Absolutely, so I think that's what we tried to bring to Blackstar was bring forward the heritage that we had from okay. Marshall. Uh, you know, I'd worked there um, eight years, I think Bruce had been there over 10 years. Um, but bring all the innovation and kind of go left and right of, okay. of, of the Marshall thing. So, um, and it was really driven by wanting to understand why amps sounded the way they did, yeah. and then building better tools for people to all express right. themselves. Okay, cool. Um, well, uh, we talked about I'm tweaking yesterday and yeah. you tell us there was like this one kind of secret weapon. Yeah. You told it's nothing to do with like fancy digital measuring yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's like you just mentioned an AB box. That's, oh yeah. It's your main <laughs> thing. And it was funny no, I have one here. Like, okay. I have one just here. Can yeah. I move? Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so what's the thing? It's a simple AB box. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a big deal for us. So we do have um, lots of... Uh, Expensive test equipment. We yeah. have digital analyzers, we have audio analyzers, we have awesome all layers. sorts of stuff, yeah. all this stuff. But actually the most important thing for us is the ears and an AB box. And um, as like Dan was explaining yesterday, yeah. in our opinion, there is no such thing as sonic memory. So right. people who say, you know, that sounds like uh, a 1963 AC30, you know, um, with, um, you know, <laughs> carbon fill resistors and power, you know, and that, that sounds like, uh, uh, a 1967 box, it's all bullshit. Yeah. You Are cannot you sure? tell the difference. Yeah. I th Personally, we think you can't yeah. tell the difference. So actually, for more than, so believe I, it or not, more than a few milliseconds. Right. If That's you, what it said, four yeah. milliseconds, and yeah. it's gone, what you remember? It's kind of yeah. gone. Yeah. So when we do our AB bo a ABs, if you're playing an amp and then pull out the lead and plug into the other amp, you're gone, you're right. dead. Okay. So the thing about these is it just allows you to do an instantaneous AB. And the thing we were talking about yesterday is um, when you're designing an amp, right. if you don't have a reference point, yeah. then you really can go off track. Because you don't know where you want to go. Right? Yeah. Well, you think you do. Yeah, you, you know, think you do. And, and, you know, 
as guitarists, as engineers, we all have opinions about yeah. how things should sound. But I think even as an experienced amp designer, and I've designed a few, you know, you speak to Paul Stevens, yeah. our, our sort of senior design engineer, he'd, I'm sure he'd say the same thing. Even with all that experience, if you don't have a sonic reference yeah. point, you can really go off track. Yeah, well, Two or three days, and you can be kind of in the wilderness. I think a the listening is different <coughs> from day to day. Like everybody knows the situation, yeah. going to the practicing room, everything's fine. Yeah. Two years later, oh, it sounds like crap, but it's the same, yeah. same guitar, yeah. same room. So yeah, you just changed a little bit. And absolutely. So yeah. And we said, you know, before we start a design, one of the first things we do is we kind of identify what the references are going to be. Yeah, right. That will be one of my next questions. Yeah. When, when you think about a new amp, what's, where, what's the, where's the inspiration coming from? So you hear a sound in the radio where I said, oh, that's a good sound. I want to make it better in this or that case. Or it's just like you wake up in the morning, have a coffee, and ah, oh, that would be a cool idea for an amp. No. It's, where does it come from? Yeah. So it's, um, it's a mixture of all those things. <laughs> so we, at Blackstar, we have kind of quite a structured way of... Um, deciding which products to do. Okay. Some of that's a little bit business minded. So obviously we run a company, we have a, right. we have a, a business need. On the other hand, we also have our own internal uh, ideas. And as, right. as a team, we're always chatting and it's the conversations okay. that lead to the new ideas. Um, and we also do quite a lot of market research as well, constantly looking at what the market's okay. doing. And then that gives us ideas as right. well. <coughs> Um, I suppose that the most fundamental thing is that when we're deciding what to do, we're always trying to give guitarists a better, a better solution. Okay. And so we're always trying to improve the guitar player in yeah. mind. Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so that's what we do. We, we talk to the market, but more importantly, we talk internally and a lot of brainstorming, a lot of whiteboards, okay. but one, a fundamental part of what we do is at the end of that, we have what's called a design brief, which is a pretty obvious thing to do. But in there are the sonic references, and whether they're our products or competitors' products, right. we always kind of put some stakes in the ground so that when we're doing the design and the engineers start the design, they know which kind of which direction they're yeah. heading in. We never copy, but it's just to give us a direction. It's an idea of, of a yeah. sound. Yeah. Okay. So you know, if we say, well, we want this to kind of be in a, you know, in a sort of a an artisan kind of sound for the clean, but yeah. we want something that's maybe a little bit more American on the, you know, it might reference right. an American high gain or something like that. And then the secret for us is to take those references and kind of try and move them forward right. and make them something really relevant okay. for players. So you find one, what you like, and try to make it better <coughs> in yeah. that case? Yeah. Okay, um, how, how long does it take from like having an idea yeah. while building prototypes and yeah. AB and whatever, and till you say, okay, now we're done mm -hmm. and go in production? Yeah. Um, I'd say the record we've ever done is six months from, so from an idea wow, okay. to into production. That's a that was probably, believe it or not, was the first HT5, really? okay. which was a, a HT dual yeah. preamp, basically, the HT dual yeah, pedal yeah. into a, into into a, a little, uh, power, into a little power amp. And that, that was kind of relatively straightforward because we very early identified what it was. All right. Something say like um, HD Venue Mark II, which we've just done, was an 18 month project because we designed that from the bottom up, you know, and the whole thing okay. was, was brand new. Does it happen that, like, um, somebody says after six months, ah, okay, we got to start again because ah, it's gone in a really, weird, really in the wrong good. way? Well, so <coughs> the idea is, is not because we have this structured way of doing it. So I just wanted to talk to you about this. So we, we identify what the references are. Right. And then the next thing for the engineers to do is to prove whether we have the technology okay. to, to do that. And that's what this thing over here, uh, this sort of bench prototype thing's about. So what we do, and this is a discipline that we, we try and follow on every project, okay. is that before we start laying out PCBs and doing the production part, All right. we build the whole amp and all the functions as a breadboard prototype okay. in, the, so in the lab. The thing is kind of ready when you're ready. So you say, yeah. this is the sound we want to hear, yeah. and then bring it to production. Yeah. And going through that process uh, allows us to sort of um, confirm or to rule out certain features. Okay. So the theory is that at this point, if there's something we've said, wouldn't it be great to do this, and we can't do it, uh, we'll find out here rather than waiting on later. Right, OK. If you, the closer you get to, I think there's, there's some kind of um, production engineering science behind this, the closer you make 
a change to the production date, the vastly more expensive yeah. it becomes. And then after production, it's even it's, more yeah. expensive. So, it's so the earlier you do it, the it's better. It's more comfortable, so because of maybe changing a capacitor is not that complicated yeah. here than in yeah. the fabric. Well, yeah. for, okay. and, then, and then what we do, just for your information, is that that thing becomes the golden reference. So say, so whatever okay. amp this is going to be in the end, we do that, we sign it off, we have quite a formal sign-off right. process. And then when we productionize that, i.e. put it on the PCB, da 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 Bring on. like these ones here, yeah. then that isn't allowed to be said, that's OK, until it's matched that one, right. and then we take it on. So that's where this little box ca came yeah. into, right? So behind these delightful uh, fence panels that we Maybe have we around, um, sure. yeah, around the delightful fence panels, we have basically at least one of every Black Star we've ever made a production sample. Right. You see they're all numbered up. Right, right. In fact, one up there says golden reference. Ah, right. Uh, yeah. See there. So that's the first off production that's okay. all signed. Right. So forever we know what that amp should sound like. All right, this is the thing. That's Everything. the golden reference. Oh, okay, right. Yeah. So, uh, the golden reference. Golden, there, there, golden references. So, um, and at the end there, you see we've got a big library of, um, of Celestians, which are, again are all Proven, we know their reference samples. Right, them and no, yeah, okay. which is such an important having the speaker yeah, for new designs. Like, I think most super people important. don't think that much about speakers. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, because like putting an amp on this or that cap is always it could be a main difference. Oh, yeah, and having yeah. like what you want to hear. Yeah, so. it's something we learned. You know, I've, I've been doing this since uh, '96, I started yeah. at, at Marshall, so 22 years, right? And a lot of my experience at Marshall was working with Celestian, uh, um, yeah, and learning about. How, how important the, the speaker is right. to, the, to the overall sound of the amp. And also, to be fair, the, the variance within speakers, trying to understand how right. much speakers can vary from one to from another and how you manage that. In although terms of they design. are the same yeah. speaker, like two yeah. greenbacks are not two <coughs> greenbacks. I, right. I would say, you know, and I think Celestian do a great job yeah. of controlling what they can, right. but because of the, the, the cones are made out of paper, yeah. and paper, as you can imagine, right. is yeah. quite variable. Yeah, and we know eventually we work a lot with papers as a magazine. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's true. Yeah, yeah, and you can imagine. Uh, obviously, um, Celestian do a lot to quality control that, but eventually, the fibers of each yeah. individual yeah. speaker it's has a um, has a variance to the sound. It's a natural material in the end, yeah. so you can. It's like wood. Yeah, it's not the same. Yeah. Um, so. Um, you got a, you got a lots of lot of new stuff coming yeah, yeah. right now to NAMP show. Yeah, uh, wanna walk? Talk a little bit about it. So, wow, yeah. yeah. So, uh, so where do we start? I want question later for reference amps. So that yeah. was what I was interested in. So, yeah. so okay, when you, uh, we talk about the new amps yeah. coming from NAMP. Cool. So it's like uh, I heard it was like some new HT series. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So uh, really exciting. Um, we've completely redesigned. Um, our three sort of lower wattage HT amps. So the HT1, HT5, and HT20. 1520, yeah, right, okay. Um, and then the way, way to start there is the HT20. We've completely redesigned that. I know you've got a HT20. Yeah, I got one too, and it's got like two channels, like yeah. a normal two channel amp with yeah. a reverb. Yeah. And must have a little. And two EL34s. All right, it's got the, yeah, got yeah. the good ones. And we, we uh, have changed that now. It's We've got a new 20 watt with two EL84s, which is perhaps a little bit more traditional in that power rating. Um, and we've we change it so it's not a front loader, it's a top loader. Okay. <coughs> so it's a bit more of a boutique kind of right. look, a bit more of a boutique feel. We've also increased massively the flexibility. Yeah, it's, it's what, what is uh, what are major changes in like yeah. like uh, the the layout of the channel switching yeah. and boots or whatever. <coughs> so channel one, uh, clean channel. We've now got two modes on there. Okay. And um, completely redesigned the f the first. Uh, mode is like a kind of American clean type mode. The second is like a class A British mode. But these are just ideas. Okay. But honestly, the cleans are like some of the best cleans we've ever designed. In fact, we think this is one of the best best sounding amps we've ever designed. Okay. And the cleans are just absolutely gorgeous. I mean, we'll, we'll we, we demo them yeah, a bit yeah. yesterday. So I think the, the, yeah. the, the like, um, British kind of clean yeah. is like breaking up earlier. Oh, it's more man, like those yeah, yeah. crunchy sounds yeah, you get from. Yeah. So. The American style clean is very, very clean. It's clean, yeah. You know, funky, very glassy kind of thing. And then the the British clean is more break up, more mid. Yeah. Uh, and the beautiful thing about that is when you crunch it into the power amp, it yeah. just sounds amazing. A very, very natural break up. <coughs> then moving on to the overdrive, we've got the traditional. We've got two modes on the right. overdrive, 
but we've worked on those a lot and OD1 is kind of a, a lower gain, more traditional classic British rock. classic rock right. thing. But we've worked a lot on the lower end of that gain scale. Mm -hmm. So there's a great transition between the clean channels now and the so overdrive channels. it's a smooth channels. transition, really, yeah. right, okay. You know, and a lot of players, um, there's still obviously the demand for high gain and it's something that we're really good at, I think. But we want to give more focus yeah. to those sort of crossover sounds. That's, we always have. Yeah. And I think that's a really good area for us to, to concentrate on. Um, so the two modes, and the, there's a really amazing high gain uh, red channel on right. the overdrive as well. What I think was uh, really cool and like was a good good um, solution was like rolling down the volume knob in those yeah. uh, low to medium gains. It yeah. just really cleans yeah. up nicely. Absolutely. And yeah. it's it's hard to do this in a high gain channel. Yeah. So, but this is like the perfect channel yeah. for, I don't know, working with a boost. Absolutely. Whatever. Mate, yeah, so yeah. And pedals, you know, they're yeah, great. They're absolutely great yeah. pedal amps. I think what we do is on these, these amps is we have, um, we have a gain and then we have a tone and a mode. So it's a very basic looking yeah. channel, but there's so much you can do with right. that. So <coughs> the button is changing. Not only it does such a light changes, the whole preamp topology. So it's not only a, like a gain boost or oh, it's like man. changing it's, it's, internally. It's completely two right. almost separate channels, though that m those two modes. Right. So you, we change the tone stat, we change the position of the tone stat, which we've never done. So right, we go okay. pre pre gain ah, right. post, and gain. post gain. Okay. So the pre gain is the the more American type right. with an American kind of tone stack. Yeah. The post gain is it's more like the, the class A type yeah. class A type stuff. Uh, but and it then isn't like class. Sorry, it's for interpret. Yeah. Like, it's like the class A type. Well, when basically, we remove the, as we said yesterday, yeah. and we were I was doing some drawings on this stuff. It's we remove the feedback right. on the class A one, right. which gives you that class A sound. It's not necessarily the class that's important. It's the feedback right. and the damping factor. So. Um, and then the tone stat, the tone control, mm. the single con tone control, is different than what we've used before. Yeah. So um, what it's doing is basically it kind of shifts the bass and the treble a little bit like this. Yeah. So it isn't just changing the treble; it's it, lifting the bass and it's so lifting the bass, turning down the treble, okay. or attenuating the bass and lifting the treble. So it's kind of two-way yeah. while you turn yeah. just one knob. Yeah. Okay. It shifts it like that, and that's really useful for pedals. Because right. you know, matching a pedal to every amp it's ever gonna see is difficult. Right. And this, this control allows you to match the amp to pretty much any pedal. All right, okay, so, so that's, that's the other really way around. Helpful. Yeah, right, really okay, helpful. Because okay. that emphasis is really important right, when you're okay. trying to match to, match to a pedal. So yeah, and then we've got other great features. You know, we've got, um, we've got XLR recording out. We've got um, USB recording out, so you can oh, record okay, cool. direct into your door, you know, and it's amazing um, speaker emulator. So you got no, no let's say, <coughs> Prejudice against digital stuff in, in an app no, because no. all this like, oh we built uh, good tube amps we don't want like USB or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But if what's your thing? It's if it works, it works. Well, yeah, I think okay. we, we're proud to be a heretic in that in that way. I think so. We always, you know, right from the beginning. A lot of this again coming back to my friend uh, and colleague Bruce. Um, he was always about you know a valve. There's nothing mysterious about a valve. It's an electronic component yeah. to be understood. Oh, right. And the same with the digital side as well. You know, the, the reason why a digital amp sounds good or a valve amp it's sounds good, good um, th those reasons are there to be understood. So yeah. I don't have a particular prejudice. And so we basically do whatever it takes to make the amp yeah. sound the way we yeah, want but it. it. But it's interesting. Most people sort of think like, or just act like a valve is like kind of myth, holy, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. It, an amp doesn't sound good because it's a valve amp. It sounds good because the design is good and the guys who build it. Oh, you, I, it's I think it's possible. On. I think it's possible to design really bad sounding valve amps. Yeah, and sure. I think actually something I find amazing is when I walk around uh, a big trade show, yeah. I hear some really bad sounding valve amps, yeah, and I do. wonder, what is that noise? How, how, and I go and look, and it's a 4,000 euro high gain made in yeah, some right. shed somewhere. And I just think, why do people really like that sound? And, and I don't think they do. So I think, right. <laughs> and maybe, <coughs> maybe the reason, part of the reason why those amps sound, to my ears anyway, so bad, uh, is because they're restricting themselves in terms of what they can do with okay. valves. Having said that, having said that, it's not strictly true because there's also some amazing sounding all valve amps. Right. There's some amazing sounding hybrid amps, which you know a lot of our um, a lot of our valve products have solid state stuff as well right. in the circuit. So it's at, most of our valve amps are 
completely analog. Yeah. But they have some op amp circuits around which just allow, like say, we build, in some of the amps, we build what we think the perfect stomp box okay. kind of in the front in, end. All right. Because we think the best sounding amps, in my experience, are mid gain valve amps with a, with a boost. Yeah. So we kind of integrate that stuff. We could okay. do it valve, but it's more expensive and probably right, doesn't right. sound as good. So as, as a conclusion, it's uh, ah. how you do it, not with what you do it. Absolutely, Something. and yeah, and we don't like to have rules. You know, I, I never say to the guys, right, okay. you're doing a valve amp, you can't do this, you can't do that. I okay. just don't think it makes sense at all. We right. we throw at it whatever don't we Don't limit to. yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. Right, okay, cool. Um, so we talked about the HG20, so there's a yeah. five watt and a one watt. Yeah, so, so then what we did is we designed the HT20. Uh, we picked up a lot of what we'd done on the new HT venue, brought that down into lower into the lower power ratings. And then, yeah, we've got the um, really interesting new HT5, new HT1. Again, what we've done is we've carried forward those um, those features. So the clean channel has two modes. All right. And the overdrive has two, two modes, but it's just in a smaller form factor. Some smaller yeah. wattage. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> um, I have to say, I love the HT5, it's been a great product for us. The new one is streets ahead of where we were before and it already sounded okay. great. You know, and this is an interesting story that the HT20 was so good, we did the HT5 and HT1 and then we just signed off the HT5 for, develop, for production yeah. next week. Um, and we had to do a few last minute tweaks because the guys when they AB'd it again, finally against the 20, we just thought it could still have another five percent. So, okay. and again, that's an interesting one for me as a as the MD of the business. It's like, do we allow the engineers to go around the tree one more time? Yeah. But okay. we always do because yeah. we have a kind of guiding principle. We'll never release anything that isn't as that's good as we think it can be. Just in case, not good. Yeah, and it's not necessarily the best thing commercially, but <laughs> yeah, well, that's what we do, mate. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you can't change that. Yeah, and the other thing you know is when we release that to the market, it's going to be there for five, six, seven yeah. years. You and know? as you said, it's hard to change afterwards. Yeah. When it's there, it's there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right, yeah. Okay. So, so basically, the, f the five is like a stripped down version of the, of the 20. The one is stripped down version of the five. They all have the common features of the two modes and mm. they have, okay. they all have USB recording output. They all have effects loop and all right. that, that stuff. So they all just sound way better right. than they so used the to. So the one is like, would be a perfect <coughs> recording. Oh, mate, because it's absolutely for example, brilliant. Yeah, and they all they all have uh, down to the five watt. They also have power reduction as well. All right, okay. So, so you yeah, can drop down the one to it's a switch. It's a switch, and uh, the five watt goes down to half a watt. Half a watt, okay. Which is again yeah, great for recording. Yeah, right, right. Um, and the the HD one, yeah. So it has very low latency um, digital USB okay. recording output. So you can get an amazing valve tone directly to into your computer okay. without any latency or anything. So it's a uh, for the kind of price you get, you get amazing cleans, amazing overdrives, studio quality reverb, and right. here I go, sales, so, sales now, yeah. <laughs> and the USB, <laughs> yeah. or, and, and you can use it as a practice amp, or you can use My it fuck. as a recording. <laughs> oh, hey, hey, hey it's going. Down. It was that good, he <laughs> fell off his chair. <laughs> uh, okay, one question was like, it's not that can we, but besides Black Girl, as you as a musician, what are the key features of like your perfect amp? Yeah. So. Aha. But don't say it's a serious one. I mean, what's no, 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 do you no, need no. like uh, I need a, a clean like this, or I need 100 watt, 50 watts. What's your if there's no limitation, you don't have to sell. It's just your perfect amp. Wow, it's like well, it's a, it's hard to say, but <coughs> it is. So um, I mean, it kind of goes to kind of what what sort of stuff I'm into. So yeah, um, I like jangly kind of cleans that okay. break up in a kind of indie way. Yeah, but I also like quite high gain with a lot of clarity as well. So right. not, not the gent stuff. I used to, I understand that stuff. You want to hear the play that a bit, strings, but yeah. It's a little bit more sort of, okay. um, sort of uh, power pop, power punk type stuff that I Banging play. Out some yeah, chords, no, right? so it's got to go to jump, but it's got to have a lot okay. of clarity okay. for the big notes and articulation and all that stuff. So what would do that best? Um, do you know what I think for me, the amps that I really like for doing that are the ones that are based around a like EL84 power amp. Okay. Or the ones that we say are class A cleans, right. it's that with a stomp box in front. Or, okay. or those those channels on our amps where the feedback is removed, because it just gives you that extra level of clarity oh, yeah, right. to the clean or to the right. overdrive. I mean, I have to say, still, uh, and you'll like this, <laughs> still I'd say the amp, that we um, 
that I really love is the Artis Artisan 15, which is just so simple. It's yeah. two channels with okay. two controls on each channel. That's it. And it's uh, EL84, right. and it's low gain, and it goes into the crunchy stuff that you guys like yeah. with a stomp pedal. And actually, that in stereo with a delay pedal would All be right. that I wouldn't want anything else then, okay. and a booster. Cool. So I think low gain, but with a with a with stomp a box is where I'm at. Extra so push over the that. cliff. Yeah. Our amps do that, yeah. Cool. Okay, uh, Ian, uh, we talked about sounds and um, like AB and references and but you, you don't reference only to your reference to your own amps. You just no, absolutely. Yeah. What's the what, what's the research we're having? Like yeah. you say, oh well, I want to like have Fender clean or yeah. it should sound like a twin with this added or minus that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's yeah. the so yeah? Basically, we have a whole range of of competitors' products, and in the early days, we used to build them because we couldn't afford them. Right. So <laughs> okay. I, we've got okay. lots of like prototypes like this yeah. of, of Fenders and right. Marshalls okay. and stuff. Um, but nowadays we, we have the benefit of being able to buy some stuff. So, oh right, so over there for instance, in the corner, you'll right. see there's some uh, bass reference because okay. we did some bass amps recently. Right. The great thing about the Unity bass is that we, even though that products are like 499, 599 euro product, yeah. we A-B'd it against Valve Trace, we've got an SBT okay. behind there. And that's the thing about us trying to ex set, exceed expectations. Our right. engineers are pushing themselves to say, well, how do we do a two, three thousand dollar euro amp? Bring it to us. Put it into this yeah, combo. Right, okay. And there's always the AB box there yeah, to right. make sure that we're using those as, as our steering right. point. So we don't copy a trace, we don't copy an SVT in this instance, but we use them as guides and yeah, then I mean, we do our thing with them. To be honest, like these, these classy amps are guidelines for people out there. They, they know their sound and yeah. if you say, sounds like an SVT, they are oh, right, I got a sound in my head. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's a way to describe your sound. The sound in your yeah. head. Yeah. That's, that's our tagline. Well, cool. okay. Okay, uh, when uh, you built some new amps, like the HT series, yeah. but uh, you built some new caps. Yeah, actually. Something very exciting there is um, this, which is uh, something that's new for us. Does it look like a four by twelve? No, it's a two by twelve, uh, which is kind of there's a there's a move towards this kind of product in the market. But there's a couple of pretty unique things about this product. So um, one thing is that we've very very carefully worked on the angle of the of the front baffle is, so is to give like, you that projection. Is it like a, a tilted a high, back? Yeah, yeah tilted like back. Four by twelve. Yeah, and uh, also. On the back of there, you'll see that we've got a removable section to have open or closed back. So you can just adjust it to the way you like it. Absolutely, like, oh, cool. which is really cool. It's done with Velcro, so it's really easy does, does it to take on and take off. Okay. No rattle, but right. um, yeah, I mean, they're pretty cost effective, not really high end cabs, but they kind of redefine what's available in that area, okay. give you loads of flexibility. Wait, are they kind of priced? Can you say something about them? Uh, I'd have to look it up. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, it's not, they're not expensive cabs, right. but they do an awful lot. Cool. Yeah. A speaker type in it, Celestian? Uh, Celestian 7080, and we're also doing, at launch, we're doing a Jared James Nichols signature right. series, cool. which has two higher end um, Celestians in there, which is super cool cab. Cool. So that's one He's worth checking cool out. He's a super cool guitar player, so. He certainly it is, just we're very happy right. to have him on board. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Ian. What's is that it? Yeah, oh. I think yeah. it's cool. Thanks. Okay, can I just say, brilliant to meet you both. Well, you're really cool chat. Give so that. It's been a pleasure right. to have a chat. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Thanks, man. Thanks, man.